My parents are also getting older. Hi, this is Christy. Welcome to my vlog. As I am editing this week's vlog, I'm actually realizing that a lot of context and color is missing around kind of where I am and how we got here. So just to take a step back, I wanted to reintroduce myself. I'm a San Francisco-based content creator. The content that I create is focused on telling stories about my family, my culture, all really through the lens of food. I also host and run a Chinese supper club in San Francisco, which is where I live. Prior to doing content full-time, I was actually in tech for a number of years, really focused on doing product marketing and commercial strategy. I've been a content creator of some form for almost nine years now. For most of that time, it was very much like a hobby, a page that I ran, and in 2020, 2021, I became much more serious about it. That's when I started developing recipes, really working with brands in a bigger capacity. And in 2022, I was like, what if I decided to do this full time? A number of people have asked me this over the years, if I would ever pursue doing it full time. And I'd always told myself, you probably hate it. People always say when you turn your creative outlet into the thing that makes money, you just don't enjoy your creative outlet as much. And I didn't want that to happen in particular with food, which I love so much. But I was kind of also the mindset of, hey, I could tell myself this for the next 40 years of my life, or I could actually try it and see for myself how I feel about it. So I have been doing this for two years full time now, and I'm currently in the process of exploring going back into corporate. Back in December, I was actually recruiting much more heavily than I am right now. And I recorded some videos that talk a little bit about my recruiting experience, what my experience has been like as a full-time content creator. So I'm actually going to share some of those recordings before we jump into this week's vlog. I just got off a second interview and I'm kind of beating myself up a little bit because there's a question I could have answered better. Like at the end of the interview, I was like, oh wait, I should have answered it this way. I'm like, Why didn't I just think to answer it this way before? my experience has been in product marketing so i think going back into product marketing especially in like financial services or payments would be like the path of least resistance even though it's a path of least resistance in this economy with all the layoffs and all the talent floating around there is still a lot of resistance i've gone like eight to ten recruiter screens and for most of them i like go through to the hiring manager which is great sometimes i get through to the final round and then obviously no offer so if you're also going through this recruiting experience like I feel you. I feel your pain. It is a journey. We will get there together. I believe in this. I have been a full-time content creator for the last year and a half. I thought I would do more things in this time period and I just didn't. I think part of it is the, the financial struggle. I will be very lucky if I make enough this year to pay my rent and part of my living expenses. So I think like having that kind of weigh over me, I'm a little bit like, I don't know why it's just like I, I just feel a little bit less creative because I have that financial stressor I don't know if other people will feel this way too but that's just that's just me and I think like growing up in a household that's always been very financially minded like saving has always been very important it's something that my parents taught us investing has been important and so for me to burn through my savings without an end in sight of like when they're going to be recuperated I don't like that I definitely miss the financial stability of having a corporate job. I miss the health insurance. Like my health insurance is so expensive and I miss the retirement plans. Like I miss just being able to be like, ah, 4% of my income goes into my 401k. And then I like, don't really think about it. I feel like I have to actively think about all of these things. You know, I think if it was just me, I might give myself a little bit more grace period. But my parents are also getting older. And one of the things that's really important for me is I want to be able to give them the experiences like that they want in their lifetime. They've sacrificed a lot, given up a lot so that my sister and I could have the lives that we have. Wow, I'm getting emotional. You know, when we went to Taiwan in September, October, my parents paid for most of the stuff. And I don't like that. Like, I feel like I should be at the point of my life. And I was at the point of my life where I was the one paying for vacations, buying them nice gifts. Oh, like mom and dad would love a Dyson. Like I should just get them a Dyson. Or dad needs a new chair because like his, the ergonomics of his $50 Ikea chair aren't great. Like I should buy him a nice chair. And I would just do that. And now I feel like I'm not in the position where I'm able to, to do all that. Like my dad wouldn't even let me pay for meals because he was like, you're broke and have no money. Doesn't make sense for you to pay. You know, looking into next year, I think my parents will want to do more travel. 
I want to pay for some of their trips. I want to make sure that they can go and eat at really nice restaurants when they go on their trips. And all that comes down to having or feeling financially stable enough where I can get stuff like that for them. So hopefully that gave a little bit more context and color just to kind of where we are, how we got here. Now we're gonna move over to the rest of the vlog. bring the extra chili oil to drizzle on. I just drove like an hour to come here for an interview. This is the final round with this company. I'm interviewing today with the CEO, COO, and then also meeting with the hiring manager. It's pretty much like the only conversation that's like in a later stage right now. But the thing is, I don't even really want this job. Like I want the job for the sake of having a job, but I don't want this job. Like the hiring manager gives me very old school mentality energy. I was telling her about how I currently do like content creation and do like food recipe stuff and that I might continue a little bit of it once I get a corporate job again. And then she was like, oh, well, we would have to worry about conflict of interest. And like, I literally make food content and develop recipes. Very early in my career, I worked at a bank and that was very much the thinking at the time was that, oh, if Chrissy has this Instagram thing, then it's going to detract from her day job and she's not going to do a great job here. And that's a conflict of interest, which was absolutely not true, but it was just like the way that they have kind of been conditioned to think. The last thing is that it is three days a week in person, which means that I would have to drive over an hour to get here. Um, and I would just be in the car for like two and a half, three hours a day. But I'm trying not to think about that too much right now because I really want to be at the position where I get to make the decision. Like if I can get the offer, then I get to make a decision based on whether or not I want the job, right? But if I don't get the offer, then the ball was in their court and they got to make the decision. So I'm going to go in there, put on my like most enthusiastic face and hopefully charm some hands off. Wish me luck. I have to go in soon. Um, I'll tell you how it went. I was gonna wear sneakers, but the boy was like, do you have other non-sneaker shoes? So I pulled out these boots that I have not worn in ages. Tell you about it in the car. My case down. 
I'm so tired. <laughs> I feel like all the teas I drank, I'm just crashing. I talked to the COO first. And I actually really liked him. I think out of all the people that I've talked to in the company, the CEO and the COO are my favorite. Which is a really good sign because I feel like so much of like a culture of a smaller company is set by the C-suite. So it's nice that there are people that I feel like I resonate and that I vibe with. The COO conversation and I'm going for an hour 15. It was a 30 minute conversation initially. And then with the CEO, I think we talked for like 45 minutes and it was also supposed to be 30. That one started off good, but I was just so tired by the end of it that I don't think I was like that high energy. But I think they want someone who's like a little bit more high energy, more of a go-getter, can really rally the troops type of person, which I am just not after a very, very long drive and two hours of conversation so we'll see what happens they said they are interviewing some other people this week but like i know i'm the best candidate <laughs> it's just whether or not the best candidate gets the job i did get a a fig bar to go i actually really like these things boy thinks they're gross but i think they're really good my fertility clinic had them when i was getting my eggs frozen and i got really hooked on them and the ceo also gave me a book the Hard Thing About Hard Things by the Andreessen Horowitz guy. It will take one hour, eight minutes to get home, which is not terrible because I think without traffic, it's like 15 minutes. But I understand that this is not that bad of a commute compared to what other people do and it is a privilege if I do get this job because employment and paycheck and stability. <laughs> mochi that I'm gonna bring over a little thing of hot tai that we're gonna have with lunch pickle some carrots and daikon because we're doing spring rolls tonight and this is like one of my favorite parts of eating a spring roll or a bon mi it's just that like little pickly crispness they probably won't get that pickly by dinner but it's better than not having it
Passa 